Hi. So my story starts four years ago in the summer of 2015. The biggest movies of the year are Jurassic World, Inside Out, and Furious 7. And you can't turn on the radio without hearing Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth see you again at least six times. Y'all got the picture? Perfect. So, I'm at the ripe old age of 13 years old, and I'm headed to my first acting class. Now, a little backstory. At this point in time, I'd considered myself the best actor on the planet, okay? It was like Meryl Streep, Denzel Washington, Viola Davis, and Tom Hanks had a baby, and that baby was me. So, as I walk into this former basketball gym that smelled like corn chips from the dance class that had just let out, I expected to be praised for my work. The teacher walks in and she goes, all right, kids, today we're doing Shakespeare. And I kid you not, time stopped. I mean like a full Zach Morris and Saved by the Bell style time freeze. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute now. I don't do Shakespeare. Look at me, look at the skin. I don't do Shakespeare. Because that's what I'd been told. In 1825, Ira Aldridge was the first black man to play Othello in London, and a critic wrote, owing to the shape of his lips, it is utterly impossible for him to correctly pronounce English. Last year, I fell in love with Shakespeare, and I was doing my best to make sure that that quote was a thought of the past. So I'm talking with a friend, he goes, man, I just don't get how you can like Shakespeare. It don't make no sense. Like, Shakespeare never talks about what we're going through. He never mentions me. And I, I, I said, okay, that's valid, but check it out. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing in them. Whether it's smarter or more highly thought of to endure this wheel of fortune-like game of chance we call life, or whether it's smarter or nobler to fear losing your life around every corner you turn because your skin has become a target on your back, or to take power into your own hands and end it before they can. To die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep pretends to dream. Aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? Pause. So. So basically, at this point, my guy Hamlet is questioning every aspect of life, right? So imagine the first time you were in love. Think about that person. Maybe it was the person that you would say it with all night on the phone, even though you knew you had school in the morning. Maybe it was your first kiss. Maybe it was the person that you shared your french fries with, even though when you ordered the fries, they said they didn't want fries anyway. <laughs> Think about that love. Think about how freely you went into it. Think about that young and reckless love. Think about how they took your heart and they held it, and they smiled. Then how they crumbled it up and Kobe shot it into the trash can, <laughs> right? So it's that type of pain times 10. He's contemplating ending his life to end that pain, to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. He goes on to say, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. He's going, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna end it and wake up draped in white and gold on a cloud, being greeted by my loved ones? Am I gonna go, Tupac? <laughs> Luther Vandross? <laughs> Prince? They let you in here? Or is it gonna be more of a, okay, hell's actually not too bad at its current price point. Admittedly so, it's a little hot, but it's nothing we can't, what? What do you mean we're only allowed to watch reruns of the Jersey Shore? <laughs> he goes on, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than to fly to others that we know not of. He's saying there's a comfort in knowledge here I know what can affect me, but 
I would rather stay here than be ignorant to what can affect me there. At least here I know what's dangerous. Thus, conscience doth make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought and enterprise of great pitch and moment in this regard that currents turn awry and lose the name of action. All of these things are intrinsically human. Questioning God, questioning the afterlife, all these things that, these are things people of all ages and shapes and colors go through in our everyday lives. So when we tell these stories, it's because we love them, yes, but it's also for those kids that didn't make it. It's for Mike Brown. It's for Trayvon Martin. It's for Tamir Rice. It is for Emmett Till. We tell these stories for kids like me, what a cute kid, <laughs> who were told that they did not belong in these stories. And we tell them for our future. And those kids to come who will live in a world where no one will question why they're telling these stories. That's why we tell the story. That's why I love Shakespeare. Thanks. Thank you.